This is Bermuda, home to some of the world's deepest ocean trenches and ancient underwater volcanoes. In August, I joined a group of scientists on an underwater expedition to help chart its hidden depths and gauge the general health of the area's coral and fish. And this is the machine that would take us down. A 2.5 tonne Triton submersible, essentially a mini submarine. That's me there looking somewhat terrified ahead of our trip. Let's go through your head, Oliver. Um, a kind of mixture of excitement and terror, I suppose. Really? Yeah. Very little is known about the deep sea, despite it making up 95% of the Earth's livable habitat. But the new research, led by a charity called Necton, is shedding light on previously undiscovered species and the threat posed by climate change, overfishing and pollution. I'm ready. Yep. It's a tight squeeze inside the cabin of the craft and also swelteringly hot, right, much like a greenhouse. All right. Ready? We're good. That's my pilot there, Kelvin McGee, who will be taking me down into the depths. Once underwater, the mini sub will use its mechanical arm, seen on the front there, to collect samples of coral and sponge. We also hope to see some yet undiscovered marine life. Really looking for a seatbelt, don't really need to see it. Top side, top side. After some last minute checks, the craft is finally ready for its descent. Here we go. Okay. As we descend into the murky depths, the temperature steadily drops and the ocean around us turns a very dark blue. You're going to feel a little popping here now. The fizzing noise you're hearing is gas being released from the ballast tanks so that the submersible is heavier than water and sinks. It's like you're in a really strange aquarium, isn't it? Isn't it ever? It's just kind of really bizarre. Yep. Here we are at 150 meters or just under 500 feet. There are whip-like corals and fish here that specialise in conditions where there is less food, less sunlight and colder temperatures than near the surface. The green lasers you're seeing passing over the rocks help measure deep sea objects that can appear smaller when looking through the curve of the Triton's bubble. And just a note that the footage you're seeing here is a mixture of both our own voyage and others taken earlier in the week. So 150, we're looking at uh, 3, 4, 450. Right. Still see some light. Oh yeah, it'll, it'll still be light on this one. Even at almost 500 feet down, light from the sun was still visible from above the craft. I was told we would need to plunge 1,000 feet for there to be complete darkness. Despite a lack of sea creatures during our time underwater, we were able to collect a valuable yellow sponge. Not bad for our short journey. Meanwhile, back on deck, the ship was preparing for our ascent. And after three hours underwater, I too was ready for some fresh air. It was a relief to step out of the craft, stretch my legs and feel the sun on my face. Really good, incredible. This is amazing. Yeah. It's like a hidden world, isn't it? It's just awesome. Thank you so much. Over the coming year, these scientists will survey the deep sea off Canada, Bermuda and in the Mediterranean to get the first comprehensive health check of one of our planet's greatest mysteries, the deep sea. Given how heavily we rely upon it, from the food we eat to the air we breathe, it is hoped through this research we will start to care more about the deep sea the more we learn about it.